Hello and welcome to today's WorkSafe Month webinar, Find Cancer Early. I'm Stephanie Murawski from WorkSafe Tasmania and I will be your moderator. Before we start, please take a moment to read the following slide about information received today. I'll now go through housekeeping. Here is a screenshot of the attendee control panel. You should see something that looks like this on the right hand of your screen. You're likely listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would, however, prefer to listen over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. Webcams and audience microphones will not be used in today's presentation. Questions will be taken throughout the webinar. Please use the window on your control panel to type and submit your questions. Finally, today's webinar is being recorded. I would now like to introduce your presenter, Ella French, Cancer Prevention Project Officer from Cancer Council Tasmania. As part of the prevention team, Ella delivers education on key messages and coordinates the Sun Smart program. Ella has worked at Cancer Council Tasmania for five years and is passionate about community health, well-being, and has extensive experience in engaging the community to achieve positive health outcomes. Welcome, Ella. Thank you, and thank you everyone for coming along and listening to today's webinar. So as Stephanie mentioned, I'm more than happy for questions to be asked throughout. So if anything crops up for you, please pop it in the chat. So just before I begin, sadly, we know that cancer impacts a lot of people. So I just want to acknowledge that there may be some of you listening who have been directly or indirectly affected by cancer. So if today's presentation raises any concerns or issues for you, please look after yourself. And if you need to, take a break and return when you're ready. We have wonderful cancer support services available in each region. And the number will be on the slide at the end if you would like to contact us. We don't give out any individual clinical or medical advice, so I won't be talking about that specifically today. And if you have any signs or symptoms that you are concerned about, we encourage you to speak to your doctor. So our mission is to reduce the impact and incidence of cancer on all Tasmanians. So we do that by providing high quality support services for people affected by cancer. So that may be people that are affected directly or indirectly. We invest in cancer prevention programs that educate the community about lifestyle factors that can decrease the risk of cancer, which is the area that I work in. And last but not least, we fund local cancer research projects and provide a respected voice for people affected by cancer. So we are more than 90% funded through the community. So we rely on the support of our events and ones that you may have heard of, such as Rare Life for Life, Daffodil Day, Women's 5K, Australia's Biggest Morning Tea, our breakfasts, balls, and of course our donations, bequests, and community fundraising. All of the money that we raise at Cancer Council Tasmania stays here in Tasmania. So unfortunately, more than nine Tasmanians are diagnosed with cancer each day. There are two thirds of cancers that we have no idea what the causes are. We do know that around a third of cancers can be prevented through healthy lifestyle choices. A healthy lifestyle is also important in helping to prevent a reoccurrence of cancer. It can also prevent other chronic conditions too. The good news is that the five year survival rate has greatly increased for all cancers combined and is around 70% compared to around 45% 30 years ago. The most common cancers in Australia are prostate, breast, bowel, melanoma and lung cancer. And these will be sort of the main ones that I'll focus on today. The 10 most common cancers in, in Australia account for around 74% of all cancers diagnosed. So we have seven key messages that we provide education and information on uh, that get checked and find cancer earlier sort of bundled together. And this is what I'm going to be presenting on today, but we can provide information or education on any of these key messages. So today is really about 
trying to educate people on knowing their body and visiting your doctor if you notice any changes and participating in the national cancer screening programs for bowel, breast and cervical cancer. Finding cancer early in particular, the program that we have is around highlighting the signs and symptoms of the five most common cancers in Tasmania. And as I mentioned, the five most common cancers are prostate, bowel, breast, melanoma and lung. So I'm just going to play this video now around find cancer early. The bathroom is a good place to look for cancer and find it early. If you do find it early enough, there's a better chance of doing something about it. Look for blood in your poo. A nagging cough for unusual weight loss and check for blood in your pee. An unusual lump or swelling in any part of your body. Changes in a spot on your skin or any other changes in your body that are not normal for you. If you're over 40 and have any of these changes, tell your doctor. Find out more at findcancerearly.com.au. That video was around our Find Cancer Early program, which I mentioned focuses on finding the early signs and symptoms of the five most common cancers. So why do we want to get checked? Well, it is crucial to get to know your body. So if you find any changes that you can detect these at an early stage. Most cancers can be detected at an early stage when treatment is more likely to be effective and successful. Body awareness is so important so you can recognise symptoms early and there have been screening tests developed that can detect certain cancers or at least warning signs of these cancers well before any symptoms are present. So some of the early signs of the five most common cancers include coughing up blood, blood in your poo and blood in your wee. If you have any of these symptoms once or more, please call your doctor. If you have any of these symptoms for more than four weeks, so this includes problems weaning, runny poo or diarrhoea, any unexplained weight loss or any unusual pain, lump or swelling anywhere in the body. If you're becoming more short of breath or have a persistent cough or a new or changed spot in your skin, then please call your doctor if you have any of these for more than four weeks. Particularly, unfortunately, if you're over the age of 40 years, as your risk does increase from the age of 40, but it is really important for everyone to be checking themselves regularly. Of course, any of these symptoms can be due to something more common and less serious than cancer. For example, you know, gastro, food poisoning, things like that, but it's still really important to get checked. So do any of these symptoms surprise you? So prostate cancer is the most common cancer in Tasmanian and Australian men. The causes of prostate cancer are not understood and there's currently no population screening available. So what's important is to be really aware of the potential symptoms to look out for. So some of these include frequent weaning, especially at night, pain or burning sensation when weaning, blood in wee or semen, incontinence, a weak or slow interrupted flow of wee, and again, unexplained weight loss or fatigue. Again, most of the time, these symptoms will be linked to something more common and less serious than cancer, but it's really important to speak to your doctor regardless. So would there be anything that would stop you from going to the doctor if you had these symptoms? Are there any barriers that would stop you? Let me know if there are. So breast cancer is the most common cancer in Tasmanian and Australian women. When breast cancer is detected early, women have a much greater chance of being successfully treated. Breast awareness is really important. If you notice a change that is unusual for you, again, please speak to your doctor. I think this picture on the screen is a really great way to highlight some of the potential signs and symptoms that you might come across. So I'll just give you a minute to look at some of these.
So when checking your lemons or your breasts, it's really important that you check right up to your collarbone and also under your arm, checking all of the areas. And don't forget that about 1% of men get breast cancer too, so it's important for men and women to be checking. So have a think about how you can remind yourself to regularly check your breasts if you don't already do so. So there is a national screening program for breast cancer and this is done through Breast Screen. So Breast Screen Tasmania offers screening mammogram every two years for women aged between 50 to 74. So women in that age group will receive an invitation to participate and Breast Screen was temporarily closed only for um, sort of a few weeks, maybe up to four weeks during COVID, but it is open and everyone can be heading in there. It is a free program available to those who are eligible. You can participate from the age of 40 and over the age of 74 for free. You just won't receive an invite in the mail. You can book an appointment by calling 13 20 50. The appointments are usually sort of 25 to 30 minutes, so not too long. Um, and your results will be sent to your doctor. And if further steps are required, then your doctor will follow up. But just to reiterate that the screening program is for women with no symptoms. So if you do have symptoms, it's important to go to your doctor. If you don't have symptoms and you're in the eligible age group, then please, it's really important that you participate in the breast screen program every two years. So I'll now just play a video about cervical screening. So the cervical screening test is available for women aged between 25 to 74. So if you have a cervix, you should book in with your doctor every five years for this test. Following the introduction of the cervical screening program 10 years ago, cervical cancer incidence in Australia has almost halved. Since this time, researchers have discovered the link between human papillomavirus or HPV and some cancers, including cervical cancer. Australia is the first country to globally introduce both a HPV vaccine and a cervical screening program and is on track to eliminate cervical cancer as a major health issue, which is pretty amazing. So you'll receive a letter in the mail reminding you when you're due. And if you haven't received a letter, then it's worth checking with Medicare just to make sure that your address is correct. You book in for this appointment through your doctor. So you might remember that it used to be called a pap smear test that was every two years. Well, now it's the cervical screening test that's checking for the HPV virus. So well before any symptoms are present and it's every five years. So the actual test itself is free, but there may be a fee for the appointment depending on your healthcare provider and depending if your, your doctor um, bulk bills or not. So there's a HPV vaccine available for boys and girls aged between 12 to 13 years, but it doesn't cancel out the need for the regular cervical screening test. So if you have any symptoms such as unusual bleeding, um, any unusual discharge or pain, then it's important to go straight to your doctor. So bowel cancer is the second most commonly diagnosed cancer in Tasmania. And if found early, around 90% of cases can be successfully treated. So if you have symptoms or a family history of bowel cancer, again, it's important to see your doctor. So some of the symptoms can include seeing blood in your poo or blood in the toilet paper after you've gone to the toilet having a recent or persistent change in your bowel habit. So I mentioned some of these before, like constant diarrhea or constipation, something like that. 
feeling tired for no reason or if you're losing weight for no reason. So if you have any of these symptoms, please call your doctor. So it's really important to be checking your poo. And this is not something that people often like to think about or like to talk about, but I think quite a handy little way of remembering if your poo is healthy or not is if it's yellow or brown, you can flush it down. If it's red or black, go see a quack. So there is a national screening program for bowel cancer as well. So all Australian men and women aged between 50 to 74 will receive a free bowel screening kit in the mail every two years. So have you received a test in the mail and did you get around to doing it? If you haven't, would you be happy to potentially share maybe what were some of the barriers to not doing it? If you received a kit in the mail and you didn't do the test and you would like to, you can call the National Bowel Cancer Screening Program on 1800-11-8868. So the chance of getting bowel cancer increases from the age of 50, so that's why currently the program is between 50 to 74 years of age. So between that age, you receive a free kit in the mail and people who have done the test say it's pretty quick, cleaner than what they thought and easier than they expected. The test is looking for invisible traces of blood in your poo that can't be seen by the naked eye. So all you need to do is collect two tiny samples from two separate poos. So you collect them as soon as you can, so either in the sort of same day or within the couple of days. But don't worry, you don't actually have to touch your poo. And this is something that I think people sort of worry about a bit, but your collection tube does that for you. Ideally, if you keep your samples in the fridge, but don't freeze the samples. But if this makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable keeping your poo in the fridge, then just a cool spot, but just as long as it's not in a spot that's gonna get too hot. So once you've read the checklist and you've collected your samples, then you just need to mail them within 24 hours if you can. The postage is free and your samples will be sent to the lab and your results will be mailed to you in around two weeks. If you have a, res a negative result, then this means that no blood was found in your samples and you won't need to do anything else until your kit arrives again in two years time. But if you do develop symptoms in the meantime, then please talk to your doctor. If you receive a positive test result, this means that traces of blood were found in your samples. But this could still be due to something other than cancer. So it's important to make an appointment with your doctor to investigate. So just for your peace of mind, majority of results do come back negative and majority of the positive results come back as non-cancerous. So please do the kit when it comes in the mail. So non-melanoma skin cancer is the most common cancer overall. Um, unfortunately in Australia, by the age of 70, approximately two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer. So it's very common. Melanoma is the fourth most commonly diagnosed cancer among Tasmanians. So most skin cancers are caused by overexposure to UV from the sun. So most are preventable by wearing clothing, a shady hat, so a hat that protects your face, neck and ears, sunglasses because um, majority of cataracts are caused by UV and you can also get cancers in the eye, seeking shade and wearing sunscreen. So it's really important that if you're an outdoor worker that you need to be doing this all year round because of how exposed you are to UV. Um, if you're an indoor worker, then using sun protection whenever the UV is three and above. So this is from the beginning of September through to the end of April. We have a really great app called the SunSmart app that's free to download. And that's a really great, great way to tell you what the sun protection times are for the day and what the UV is currently and what the maximum UV will be. So in terms of skin cancers, if found early, most can be successfully treated. It's really important that you become familiar with your skin. It's important to notice what your skin looks and feels like, so any changes can be quickly noticed. But it's important to check all of your skin, not just sun exposed areas. For example, Bob Marley had a melanoma under his toenail, um, and so you just never know where it can crop up. So it's really important to be checking all of your skin. Skin cancer is often visible but rarely painful, so it does make it easier to detect in the early stages. Don't just rely on an annual skin check, be really self-aware and check your skin regularly. So when was the last time you went to the doctor? In particular, when was the last time you had your skin checked? You need to look for any change in shape, size or colour of a spot or the development of a new spot. 
If you notice any of these or you're suspicious of a particular spot, then please go to your doctor. And I think the check the signs uh, little bookmark that we have on the screen is, is a nice sort of simple way to try and convey what to look for. Um, we have these available. We have lots of sort of hard copy resources that I've spoken about today available um, if you're interested. But I think this bookmark is a really great way to show that, yeah, it's an increase in size, shape or colour or a new spot that you should be looking for. So when you're checking your skin, make sure that you undress and stand in a spot with good light. Use a large mirror and a smaller handheld mirror to see your back, legs and scalp. As I mentioned, check all of your skin. So checking your armpits, inside your legs, and your ears, your hands, your feet, and even for your scalp. So using a comb to check through your head and feeling for any lumps or bumps. You can also ask your family member or friend to check any areas that you think you may have missed. Ella, just a question that's come through. Would you, on in, in respect uh, to uh, skin cancer, would you mind repeating the months of the year where sunscreen is, is most important? Yeah, of course. So it's when the UV is three and above. So this is the beginning of September through to the end of April. And it can be a little bit um, misleading sometimes because people assume that temperature and UV are related. And of course, some days at the moment um, with the spring weather, it can be quite cool on some days and quite warm on others. But regardless of the temperature, it's when the UV is three and above. So beginning of September through to the end of April. Thanks. Thank you. So lung cancer. So in Australia, tobacco smoking is the largest single cause of lung cancer, responsible for around 84% of lung cancers in men and 74% of cancers in women. Tasmania has the second highest rate of smoking in any state of territory in Australia, and it is the leading cause of cancer death here. But there are other causes of lung cancer, such as asbestos, air pollution, and other occupational exposures, such as diesel fumes or silica dust, passive smoking, family history, and then there's just some causes that we're just not aware of. So some of the signs to look out for include a shortness of breath and wheezing, hoarseness, chest pain, coughing or splitting up blood, a new cough that does not go away, if you have any reoccurring bronchitis or pneumonia, loss of appetite, unexplained weight loss or fatigue. Quitting smoking can be really difficult to do and many people successfully make the transition to becoming a non-smoker with the right help and advice, even if it takes a few attempts. If you want some extra help from a skilled and supportive team to make the change, contact the quit line to find out more information. Our quit line is 13 quit or 137848. We have really lovely quit staff that can give great advice or they're just happy to chat um, and they can just support you through your quitting journey. So never give up giving up. So just to reiterate some of the points I've spoken about today, so it's really important to be checking yourself regularly. So know your body so then you know that if something unusual crops up, then you can pick it up quite quickly. And if you do notice anything unusual, please speak to your doctor. If you're eligible, please participate in the free cancer screening programs, as we know that finding cancer early improves your chances of successful treatment and long-term survival. So just to um, go through those signs and symptoms again, so I'll just leave this up on the screen for a little bit to check. So um, the three symptoms at the bottom, if you have once or more, and the ones above, if you have for more than four weeks, if you have any of these, then please tell your doctor. So we know that everyone experiences barriers when making changes to your health. So some examples could be, you know, not knowing where to get help or other health and general life things happening for us, um, such as cost, feeling unmotivated or being anxious. The key is remembering that every situation is everyone's situation is different and it will be, it's normal if you need help or to take a few times for new habits to stick. Most people do well after sticking to a change plan for a while, however, but seeking help when they get stuck. Another great thing to remind ourselves is when we slip up that we're not back to the beginning and we can learn from our mistakes and from our setbacks. 
to go back to this slide, sorry. Has anyone ever felt like change seems impossible when you have a setback? Um, we can provide a range of resources and information to help to reduce your cancer risk on any of our key messages that I talked about at the beginning. You can find these on our website or you can contact me. I have our email at the end. So making a change plan is quite a good way to be ready for things um, that might set us back, I suppose, if we're trying to change any of our behaviours. So this can be used on any of our key messages. Um, but in particular, I was thinking, you know, today, for example, if you're wanting to check your breasts more, then that would be your goal. Um, the benefits to checking your breasts regularly is if you find anything unusual, then you can find it at an early stage. Some barriers might be, you know, not finding the time. Um, I know that life gets gets ahead of us sometimes and we don't make ourselves a priority. So trying to think of some of the barriers, but then what some of the strategies, strategies you can use to overcome some of these barriers. So it might be, you know, setting a reminder on your phone each month or doing something to remind you that you can check your breasts monthly. And then who can you get to remind you perhaps if you get stuck? So you can use this change plan for any of our key messages or anything that you would like to change just to help you when you're trying to form new habits and change behaviours. It is normal to struggle with change and some habits can take time, but the more you practise, then the more likely that they will stick. So that's the end of today's presentation. Um, this is the number, so 1365 if you'd like any more information or especially if you'd like to contact us regarding our support services. And this is our email in regards to prevention, so prevention at cancertas.org.au. So thank you for listening today and does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Ella. So if anyone has any questions or, or comments that they would like Ella to respond to, please use uh, the window on your question, sorry, on your control panel to type and submit, uh, submit your questions. And to let everyone know, um, Ella is also delivering a uh, further Cancer Council Tasmania SunSmart in the Workplace webinar next Thursday at 2pm. So if anyone is interested in finding more about how to be sun smart in the workplace, uh, please head to worksafetasmonth.com.au to register for that webinar. And even if it's questions on things that um, wasn't covered in today's presentation, if there's anything about Cancer Council generally you'd like to know, more than welcome to pop it in the chat. Ella, just in respect to the resources uh, that you mentioned and uh, education sessions that that Cancer Council does does offer. Um, you mentioned that the uh, the sessions are statewide. Um, resources are already readily available for uh, for workplaces, regardless of of um, participating in an education session. Yeah, definitely. So our resources and our presentations are free, and yes, they're available, and we can send them to you or email them to you. So we've. Um, the signs and symptoms that I mentioned about the five most common cancers, we have those in poster form or in magnet form, so they're available and we can send those to anyone. Uh, we've also got the bookmarks on skin cancer, we have information on any of the cancer screening programs, so some of them will be posters and some will be more pamphlets, but we do have a range of resources, so you can definitely get in touch and we can send those to you, either email or hard copy. And as mentioned, um, yes, we can provide education sessions as well to workplaces. So more than happy for anyone to get in touch if you're interested on in any of our key messages. Thanks, Ella. During your presentation as, as well, you sort of touched on, um, I guess, barriers that, that you know, people may, may experience to wanting to sort of um, find out if, if they 
possibly do, you know, have have cancer if they have discovered a, a symptom. What are some of those those barriers, and and what's and and what what's a good way to to possibly overcome those barriers? Sure. So it, it tends to vary for different people. Um, as I mentioned, for doing the bowel cancer screening kit, uh, some people get a bit put off by poo generally um, and get freaked out that, you know, they have to touch their poo and, and so that is uncomfortable. So I think people just sort of don't really want to think about it. Um, sometimes I think people or what people have mentioned to us is being nervous of what a result may be. So if they've found something that is um, they potentially think is a symptom or something that's not normal and they, and they then get a little bit worried that of what the outcome might be so then they put off going to the doctor. Um, so I think you know it's important in those circumstances if you're worried to know that most of the time that anything that is unusual is most likely not going to be cancer. So I think for peace of mind it's really important that if you are worried about what something may be to, to go to the doctor regardless. Um, and also find support in your friends and your family. You know, um, go to the doctor with someone or confide in someone if you think that something's wrong and, and that they can also help you get there. Um, and in terms of some of barriers in terms of checking, I think a lot of people, um, and especially with a lot that's going on this year and having access to doctors and healthcare services, people have been a bit worried about going to the doctor and not knowing if they should, um, given the pandemic. But it's definitely really important to go to your doctor regardless if you're worried about if it's safe or not to go. Um, you know, it's really important to, to make your health a priority. And that goes for if you're in terms of regularly checking yourself, it's important to make yourself a priority and, and put reminders in your phone and try and set up ways to to, yeah, to make yourself a priority and make sure that you're checking yourself regularly because I think we don't always look after our own health sometimes because life gets busy and there's other priorities, but it's really important, um, yeah, that you're just give yourself those reminders and for your peace of mind that majority of time it won't be cancerous. All right. Thank you, Ella. Um, we'll wrap up the this afternoon's uh, webinar. So thank you Ella French from Cancer Council Tasmania and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar Find Cancer Early. As I mentioned earlier Cancer Council, uh, Ella will be delivering another Cancer Council Tasmania webinar Sun Smart in the Workplace next week on Thursday at 2pm so please do head to the worksafe tasmonth.com.au site if you would like to find out more about how to be Sun Smart in the workplace. Also have a look at other webinars that we are running throughout Worksafe Month up until the 30th of October. Today's webinar has also been recorded and will be made available on the Worksafe Tasmania YouTube page. On behalf of WorkSafe Tasmania and the WorkCover Tasmania Board, thank you for joining us and thank you Ella. Thank you.